not even by like a coincidence. It's more of a choice where she puts herself in these positions. I actually came out with two books. These two I picked up. We have a bit of a dilemma, okay? You guys know that we read, you know we have lots of books, and I wasn't joking when I said we had a lot of books. Let me give you guys a quick glimpse. Let me show you. We, you thought we showed you our TBR before. I mean, some of these are my husband's too, because he's a big reader. But maybe this whole bin is my husband's. I think pretty much all of it. I think this whole bin might be my husband's. Okay, we, we need to go. Yes, this is looking more like me. <laughs> the Friday Night Knitting Club. Gilded, guild. Yeah. Gilead. Gilead. <laughs> Gilead. Okay. Okay. I, I can't read, but I'm reading. <laughs> the Snow Child. Guys, there's a lot of books in here that that need to be read. There's a lot. So this is one of our big bookshelves, and we were kind of using it downstairs for the little kids. So we have a bunch of books from our TBRs and stuff that we just did. Mine over there. <laughs> And we're trying to figure out where to put it because we have bookshelves that go all the way across and we have other books over there as well because this is a shared area with the kids and there's we've been double stacking books filling bins with books and we still have we still need more space mm -hmm. you know yeah i i don't know honestly the ones on the the one in the middle right there a lot of those books are kind of like they're like learning type books yeah. and they don't really need to be on display <laughs> like they really don't especially now that i'm getting back into reading and i need to kind of create like a space for myself so we're i think we're going to use this area kind of for ourselves but we need to move all those books down we need to move all those books down there so we can move a lot of these over there and we can use this station for ourselves that way we can also kind of set up our reading set, um, station here with like two chairs the last couple of videos we've been filming we were filming on the ground and it wasn't that bad but you know like i'm approaching like arthritic age <laughs> okay well, i'm joking no. okay, <laughs> if you want to say that <laughs> but you know i'm just i don't have megan's knees so i'm not gonna be bending all the way to the ground all the time we need to have some nice chairs set up right here to have a nice little um, bookish book talk girl station. I'm like, we just need to get rid of all these kids books, like throw them over there. Can we just throw them and someone <laughs> clean them up, please? Clean up in R5. Clean up in R5. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know the books? You know, people are just gonna start taking books out and throwing them too. <laughs> I forgot I'm the mom of the house. <laughs> I'm the only one that's gonna look up. Oh my gosh. Meet the baby. <laughs> so come along with us, keep watching to watch us kind of transform our book corner we don't have everything to put our station together our corner together i should say but we can at least organize it today because by just getting certain things out of the way that don't belong so we can put our books <laughs> off the floor <laughs> So we found this cute little timeless sign. It's one that I actually wanted to get rid of so many times, but I'm trying to decide. Is it cute? Do you, do you think it's cute? It would be even cuter if it was like white. Oh, right? True. Just like light and airy, but it's like timeless and black. It's kind of giving like... Creepy bunch. I don't know. <laughs> it's just different. So should I put it back up or should I take it down? Because we can't waste all this time cleaning it. Does and then we're going to... I don't know. Does it speak to you, Charlotte? Um, um, yeah. Mm. That oh, sounds like you a hurt no. yourself? You guys, this is our progress so far. But they're not organized, but we've removed most of the children's books, and this is us right now. This one's empty, and that's where most of the children's books are gonna go. And then this one is partially empty. Oh, 
Okay guys, I have sorted most of the books on the shelf so far, and so now I will be taking the ones out of the bag that we have that we have recently bought, and so I will show you the end result of all of the piles and how they are sorted and if it looks good. If it actually looks good. Um, it's been a few days since we've been working on the bookshelf, to be fair, it's been like a week and a half, but we just need to get back at it because our books are kind of all over the place. So they're literally just <laughs> actually all over the place on the ground. So we need to get them <laughs> off the ground onto the shelf. Um, but hopefully you guys are enjoying the vlog so far. We, we showed you what the shelves look like before. We, we showed you where we we're trying to put the uh, the children's books that we had on the shelf. And um, yeah, basically just trying to make home for our books and all the books that we have bought. If you haven't been checking out our hauls, definitely check them out because we have quite a few on here and we have a ton of books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so we also have two bags of books. That's no, we have three bags. Oh, snap. <laughs> Three bags of books that's on the floor because we recently went thrifting last weekend. Didn't intend to. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're probably lying. We need to go on a book van, but we're not gonna say anything about that. We have a haul coming soon, a big haul. Mega haul, guys, to keep a look out for that. So we definitely wanna do it the color-coded way. <laughs> it's just a matter of trying to color -coord coordinate everything while still making them all fit. That's exactly. the tricky part. For the most part, your books are color coordinated. Yeah. From when I did a bit of sorting, we'll insert the clip here. Yeah. But my books are all over the place, so I need to <laughs> fix that. Okay. Okay. Let's get sorting. <laughs> some things are starting to tie together now like I have like a reddish orange shelf kind of here here are some of my black books green I really like this shelf a lot actually the blue and the purple <laughs> how's it going um, it's going I had to do this and I'm not sure a hundred percent how I feel about it so I did a thing we kind of stacked these um, I was running out of space and I ba we basically turned these three sideways and then we created another level up. I do think it looks really good. It's just so different for me. It's not, yeah. it's not like I'm a symmetrical type of person, so it's so different. But it's kind of like cute. It. I'm gonna probably keep it that way for now until I figure something else out. Guys, we'll give a sneak peek of the bookshelf. Look at that! Look at that gradient! I just, this just came out, sure. Where sleeping girls lie. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. I love her covers. They're so right? vibrant. They actually are, they're really cute. Hey bookworms, I am actually here without Charlotte. Charlotte's at school, but I'm starting today's vlog. We're doing, I'm doing a reading vlog um, and I'm starting here. And so if you're new to, to our channel, we're a mother-daughter book channel and we're typically vlogging together 90% of the times. And then there's some times where in a reading vlog where we'll vlog separately because we may be in different places at times. So I'm starting it off and I'm just gonna quickly jump into it. This month has been a really interesting month for me so far. Let me show you guys the books that I have read. So I know I show the TBR. I always show the TBR I selected given that like knowing that these are the books that I want to read but because I'm a mood reader I always get swung in a whole different direction. So I've been wrapping up a whole bunch of I threw two books in the mix of my TBR this month and I threw in they're both by Kendi Ryan. They were like long shot and block shot out of the blue <laughs> so you guys stay tuned for our reading wrap up and then you get so you can hear all about those moving on i think i mentioned to you that we are really loving this book right now we are 
basically two thirds of the way, I'd say two thirds of the way done. So we're thinking of wrapping this up today. Really, really good book. I never read the back. I always share that I don't like to read, I don't always like to read everything about the book. I just like to try it blindly at times and that's what this was about. So I knew it was a popular book. I knew it got lots of feedback. I just never knew what it was about. So we're almost done that and you might get a snippet of us like just having a chit chat about it. So I'll put a snippet of it, We of us um, doing our reading for that because we recently just did that on the weekend together. So this was us reading on a Saturday afternoon. And as you can see, a lot of us are reading on <laughs> devices. At this point in time, we actually only had one real um, physical book and I have since got my hand on another one so that's been come in really handy but overall the book was getting very very exciting and interesting at this point another book that I got put off on the back burner so I was like you know what I need to wrap it up because I've already renewed it like twice at the library this is my last renewal it's called same time next summer and it's literally due right now I didn't know anything about this book so I honestly didn't even know what trope it was. This might be a little bit of a spoiler. I'm trying not to spoil it. It's hard not to spoil it, trying to explain it. I didn't realize that this was like a second chance type book because the book starts off with her, you know, like engaged to someone else. And I didn't, I mean, I think we all, we all know where it's going to go from then on, but I just didn't know how it's going to feel about that because it's like, it's like a love affair and I'm not like, I, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not one to condone cheating. So it's like it's just really hard if you if it goes against your morals or things that you don't necessarily like to kind of gain a lot of enjoyment out of knowing that that's how it goes. That's just how I feel. I, it started off interesting just because I was curious to know the, a little bit about the backstory, but as it progressed, I find that it was taking a long time to get to anywhere. It was sharing what was going on, but a lot of it I was just like, okay, yeah, we get it. You you found romance. Yep, it's by the beach. Yep, you come and you go. Yep, you're like, like you know, their story was interesting to some degree, but I kept wanting there to be more. And it's interesting because you, I feel like her fiance in this book, I feel like there's such a disconnection. There's like hardly anything really written in there about him, at least from my perspective. I just felt like I didn't, he didn't come up a whole lot because I guess it was more focused on her and her love interest. Overall, I think it's good. I know that this is not going to be a five star read for me, but I'm just, I'm curious to know how things are going to transpire between her and her love interest. And I'm at the part where I can kind of see how it's get it's going there, but clearly someone's going to get hurt and I don't know how I'm prepared for that because the way the uh, fiance is portrayed in here as much as he has nuances that conflicts with her personality type and just like not you know that does, doesn't fully align with her her um I don't know like her just doesn't that doesn't click completely with her he doesn't sound like an awfully bad person and he doesn't sound like a person that's ill-treating her by any means he just sounds different from what she would have probably chosen meanwhile she's the one that still chose him so it's kind of hard to i i semi i'm not at a place where emotion i'm feeling like super super bad for him yet but i am feeling it i kind of feel it because you can feel the connection growing between her and her her ex and it's not even by like a coincidence it's more of a choice where she puts herself in these positions that allows her to just be growing emotionally attached to him and just testing the waters if you are into like i don't know if this would be considered like a slow burn it's not really like a ro like it's more like romanticizing rather than even like the romance nothing has ha really happened in there like that but it's feel i feel like it's slow you know the setting is slow because it does it's a dual perspective type book it goes back and forth to their that their then and the now and while doing so sometimes for me it felt kind of flat like it was dragging it was just like a story being told and at some parts i was not like oh my gosh you know but at the same time i was like already too invested to want to put it down so i wanted to just keep on going and yeah i'm at the part that i guess i was waiting for this is like something you're waiting for as your the anticipation right and i'm finally there thank god so i it's not a bad book it was just not as fast and it's not as like it didn't suck me in as much as like say my five stars would but overall the read is 
the read is pretty good. I'm I'm not at the end yet. I guess the ending is going to depict a whole lot because we know someone's going to get hurt and we know choices are going to have to be made and it just all depends it, it's just going to it all comes down to how it all pans out. You know, while in the midst of those decisions is it going to pan out well or think are they going to wait till things really really happen and get really really bad before she calls it off? Like I don't know how it's going to get, but um, the anticipation is there. Anyways, guys, so, so Charlotte is back. Hey y'all. She's back from school and um, I just finished the book. <laughs> I finished the book about an hour ago. So I was telling her, I basically, I basically kind of ranted off. <laughs> ranted since she came through the door just telling her my distaste for the book. I think I'm just gonna give it a 2.5. Um, I, re I really didn't know how to relate to any of the characters. I didn't know how to empathize with any of them. It was just, yeah, it was just a bust for me. Let me know if you guys have read this one. A lot of times in Second Chance Romance, it's like, what, you know, the character would have just came out of another relationship. Or, yeah. Or, and like now the person they're, they're with is like a huge jerk or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> in this one, the character himself wasn't, any, he wasn't really that bad. And he, he wasn't bad at all. I, mean, I don't know why I'm trying to say it like that. It's really like, if anything, he was looked at bad. It was based on the main character herself. She's the one that kind of caused it. The, I found the, the reasoning for her d engagement to be off was a like lack of understanding of her own emotion. If that makes any sense. I, it was just her own issue yeah. because she, knew that she was in deep waters when she saw Wyatt and she kind of knew all the emotions came flooding back and it they just got it just got bigger and bigger <laughs> you know every yeah. day her, mo her her love for him grew more and more even though it wasn't like fully said in that way just the way she was acting the things that she said the fact that he was on her brain 24 7 the fact that she was sneaking around with him the fact that she was all touchy-feely just all these different things yeah that, they were like huge red flags for the rest of us as we were reading that i kept thinking okay girl when are you gonna say something yeah and so we kept wanting to read just to know what gonna happen and how she's gonna handle it and it was so flat for me because it was as simple as them having dinner and it was just like oh I realized that Jack and I don't communicate this is her fiance I realized we don't communicate and it was as simple as like I can't do this Jack mind you we get it there are other there are things that were like building up but Jack was oblivious the whole time he had no idea that any of these things plagued her that anything bothered her it's more, so oh, so it's just like all from her point of view and it's like we see yeah. the inner turmoil from her point, but then Jack doesn't. Um, Jack doesn't think anything's changed. Right? Yeah, for him, he doesn't but, like, know. Everything's it's... changing for her, so it's just like so one-dimensional at that point, kind of. Basically, like, it, is, it is one-dimensional because this is all experiences from her side. It's not from. He doesn't have a clue, and I felt yeah. like he just he all from he just kept getting side side. What do they call it? Side. Yeah, sidelined. Sidelined. Yeah. yeah, he kept getting sidelined. Like it was just like it wasn't. He wasn't play. He wasn't even relevant, really, in the book. Like, was he even her fiance? <laughs> was he even? Where was this dude? The I way, don't know. The way the book wrote her, wrote him too. Like when she called off the engagement, my guy didn't even have a chance to say anything. Like the author just wrote him right out the book. Like he, it was just like, I can't do this anymore. No, it was like it was like scene change, like that, just like that. It's like, that's gonna be, that has to be one of the biggest parts of the book though. You'd think it would like build up to that. Exactly, but it you was, know? it wasn't, it wasn't huge and it, it just felt mm. so flat yeah. and I, and then the way, and then her and Wyatt getting together, I can't say I felt happy or emotional in any way towards them getting back together because it was just like, okay. I just, I almost felt like he was just a rebound regardless of the fact that it's almost like they were destined to be together. It's yeah. not, in this case, it didn't feel like that. Something, something was off. The way it kind of all went just didn't feel like that. So enough talking about this book because it's just going to make me annoyed <laughs> talking about it anymore. 2.5. I kind of wish I just sent it back to the library. I could have done without reading this one because I've kept it around for so long throughout February until now. And we're approach. we're in April, February, March, April. Oh my word. Oh. Um, yeah. Anyways, anyways, while we're still here talking to you guys, I wanted to do a quick little book haul. So recently we went shopping. We went book shopping at Indigo. And yes, while guys, while we thrift a lot and show you guys a lot of thrifting videos, we also love to buy new books too. And we love to go to the bookshop. So we went 
I feel like I look a hot mess. <coughs> you do so, not. Um, so we went to Indigo and while we were there it was pretty funny because we saw a lot, especially you, Char showed, well, Char was like, look at all the books that we just got thrifting oh. and they, just one second, one second. Look at all the books we just got thrifting that were in here. We yeah. saw like 10 of them that we just got like not even a week ago. Exactly. And mind you, um, let me see, where's, one? guys, like books like this that we get there so we get books like this at the consignment guys look immaculate condition look books like Cersei but the idea is sometimes I when I when we're at book thrifting I think that like even though I'm looking for newer books sometimes it feels like the one that I'm getting must be so out of date but or, or it's like a little bit older I would call them I'm like oh yeah it's, I'm a little bit behind you know when I get them but I don't mind because yeah. you can only read so much at once that by the time when I'm looking for certain ones I'm like okay bring it on because I didn't have to spend like full book price for it yeah and I'm still getting it but the reality is it's not it doesn't even always work like that and we get brand new books at the bookshop like books that exactly. just came out and so we were in there seeing books that are still in there brand new selling for full price and it was it's just crazy to see so we did film some footage in there but I actually came out with two books these two I picked up there because honestly these are two that I just don't think I'm gonna find anytime in the source anytime now so I, we found the beach read in there and I've just been hearing so much about this book. I really wanted to get it. Even though I have a bunch by Emily Henry that I haven't gotten into because I have Happy Place as well. I am just stoked to get into this because I've heard so many good things. So um, yeah, so I grabbed that one. And then there's this one. This one's called The Neighbor Favor. And <laughs> I'm so excited about this one. I've heard about it, seen it on Amazon a ton, but I saw it and I just left it in there, but I finally decided to pick it up. So. I heard this one's a really good read, just like Beach Read. I heard these are like five star reads. And then I also grabbed a package. I also grabbed a book from Amazon. I got it the day before. I have I no idea what this is. No, you like, don't, do you? No. R let me feel it, let me guess. <laughs> You're not gonna know. It actually is a second book to hers. Oh my goodness, what it's was this? It's the partner plot. This one just came out. And it's just like one of those light fluffy reads. Two former high school sweethearts get a chance at this marriage of convenience romance by Christina Forrest. And she's Ooh. the author of The Neighbor Favor. What happens in Vegas okay. doesn't always stay in Vegas. Okay. So you guys, I am so stoked. I, I've been picking, I find that I've been picking up a lot of thrillers lately. And while I love thrillers, I do love my light and I just, love a good like contemporary romance or you know just cute little romance story and i yeah i just want to keep adding to those as well in terms of our bookshelf we're sitting in front of it now um we were gonna show you guys the final product but we didn't because we ran into a problem technically we just need space technically we just need space and one thing we realized is that it would be good to um on haul some of the books that just aren't doing <laughs> this we're not it's just taking up space so exactly. we're, i'm going to show you some of the ones i'm on i'm on hauling from my bookshelf and you guys can uh and then Shara will probably show you one or two i don't think you have a ton to on haul it's just me i have like two books to on haul oh uh, yeah you, that's a lot for you, that you can't is a lot for you. <laughs> <laughs> i can't but like yeah so the first book I'm going to be unhauling is The Red Pencil. It's a cute book, but like I don't really care to keep it. So um, the next book is The Darkest Minds. <laughs> and I read this book a while ago, and I don't care for it anymore. No. Honestly, after reading this book, I was just so annoyed mm -hmm. because of the way it ended. I'm like, I'm done. I'm just done. I'm, not <laughs> I'm done with you. And also, like... Yeah, just like, I don't really care to read the series. But last book is City of Glass. And don't ask me why I have this, because I don't even remember picking this up. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, did you read it? This one? No. I don't, I'm not going to read this series. Oh, no. Why? I don't know. People say it's so weird because, like, the love interests are, think they're siblings, like, throughout, like, a whole book oh, or two. Yeah, and it's yeah. just like... People like incest. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't think I'm. 
I don't know whether or not I should read this series. Comment down below if you guys have read it and what I should do. But I think I would read it online anyway. Okay. So I don't need Why is that? Like I don't know, like I, I don't know if I want to read the series to begin with. Oh, I've heard okay. like so many different controversial things. Maybe I should just try out but this is book three and I don't exactly need book three. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so I need your help. <laughs> I, need, I will hold the stacks. Okay guys, so for me it's totally different. I have a ton of books to get rid of that I know I'm no longer going to need. So for starting with these Marion Keys, these are some books that I used to have in the past when I didn't know anything about these new modern books that are out there that are so exciting. And it was just like, I felt like I was just stuck in one dimension. Not to say that Marion Keys is bad. I have a couple of books that I, by her that I actually started but not really ever finished. And then I did a review on this one in, let me see, is this the one I reviewed? Mm. I don't know if I reviewed this one actually. There's another one by her that I just reviewed and they said it wasn't that great. Some people have mixed reviews. I just don't think it's one that I'm going to reach for and quite frankly if I really want to reach for it, I might just grab it again at the thrift shop. <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. Oh, we see quite a few of her in the thrift store, right? Mm -hmm. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we came back down here because honestly I was killing my back. Um, so another one that I'm going to be getting rid of is The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I just, I was debating if I should keep this because I'm a homeschool mom and I figured like my youngest could use this when she's grown, but oh my gosh, that's a lot of years. That's so I'm not sure. I might hold on to that. We'll see. I'm getting, get rid of The Silent Wife. This was actually a really, really good book for me. I would say I probably gave it like a good, if not a four and a half star, it could have been a... I'd probably say a four and a half because it's not quite up there. Even a four. Yeah. It's probably a good four. Not even quite up there with the way I knew I felt with the five star reads. But it was yeah. really good. Really engaging. Really captivating. Kept my attention. And I um, really enjoyed it. I, read, I enjoyed it so much I read up on the author. And, uh, you know, she. I heard she passed away. Or she passed away before her book even came out. Which is so sad. But, you know, she wrote a really good, a really good book. And... I really enjoyed it, but I just think it's, I'm not one to keep rereading re thrillers. I know the story all too well and I'm not going to be rereading it, so. I'm going to be getting rid of this as well. This is called February by Lisa Moore. I debated if I should keep this because this was a fun read. I actually might keep this. This was a book that my husband picked up for me and he heard about it just over like CBC radio and I read it. It was just like a fun feel good book. Yeah, just like a feel-good book, but I really just don't think I'm going to be reading it again. I don't know why. And I've seen it a few times in the thrift store as well. I'm going to be getting rid of Sylvia Day. Mm, just not, <coughs> just haven't really gotten into her, and I'm just not. <laughs> um, Wait, where's the other one? Oh, yeah, there is another one. And so oh, I, I'm going to be here. going... I'm just showing you the ones that I took off the shelf already, and then I'll show you the ones that are still on the shelf. Um, and then I'm going to be getting rid of the, the Rush series by Maya Banks. I don't know. I just don't think I'm really gonna read these. No. Yeah. Just, yeah. My book tastes have so changed since then. But yeah, these have got to come off of my shelf. I still have more. Okay, so if you saw my February TBR, you would have seen that I had the No Show on there. And this is by Beth O'Leary. This was my first time trying this author. And oh my gosh, I don't know if all her books are like this, but this was a challenge. I couldn't get through the first 30 pages. It was just too complex. And then I had Char read it and yeah, like basically say like the sentences didn't exactly even make sense. I didn't know what I was reading. So this is going. Um, I did get Shonda Rhimes, The Year of Yes. I've had this for a minute now. And I did read a whole lot of it, maybe half. I didn't fully finish it, but I really don't know if I'm committed to finishing. I don't know if I want to keep it. I actually debate about this one. Um, I picked up the Sarah Dessen book. And honestly, the reason why I'm, I'm DNFing it, or not DNFing, the reason why I'm parting with it is because I've been, there's some books that I read recently and I heard that it is similar to that and those are books that I actually didn't love and whether or not the author can write or whether the author has a story that they're sharing it's just great if it's not being delivered or perceived well it's not good to me <laughs> it's yeah. not good to me and so this I don't know I've heard good things about Sarah Dessen and I really don't want to kind of what do you call it group her up in uh like among authors especially if i never have read her but there were comparisons made 
And so with that, I'm gonna say it's gonna be a no for me. I picked up Honey, I picked up this book because I thought it's, this book is just not what I thought it was going to be actually. And that's okay, but I'm just not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna be reading this. And this is a book, I don't know what I was into back then. This is actually a popular book. I do see it in the thrift shop a lot, but I just, it's Sweet Francaise. It's called Sweet Francaise. I don't have any desire right now to read this. But I do see it in the thrift shops a lot, so if any day my heart desires to read this, I will pick it up. Yeah. Yes. It's like I there was a time and a uh, point in time when I did read historical fiction as well. Yeah, because that's what the ones that I did read. Um, oh, yeah, by her, Amy Mc. I have a few by Amy oh, McKay. Oh, there's like, um, that, like, yeah, so I have a few by this author, and it is they are like historical fictions, I believe. Yeah, so there was a point in time, but not right now, it's not this time, not right now. <laughs> so, this is a glimpse of our bookshelf at the current moment. It's a working progress. I feel like, okay, so don't ignore this. We just put this there because we just did a haul. <laughs> but I feel like there are a few books that I still want to get off of here. One of the books I'm going to be getting rid of is this one, The Beekeeper's Daughter. I've had this one here for a minute now and I did plan on reading it, but I did hear that this trope is honestly something similar like the one I just got out of with reading Same Time Next Summer. I heard that this book had contained like a lot of affairs and that just it's not a feel-good romance for me i really am not a fan so that said i'm going to remove this from my shelf and part with it there's also these two i heard this one's a really good one so i'm really thinking i should keep this one but this one is a no i heard this one wasn't good this is an older book from back in the day had this one on the shelf, had not read this one yet, so I'm gonna part with this one. And then I also had this one as well. This is one was this one was by Mary Higgins Clark. I did a review on this one and it just didn't seem like it was I don't know, it just doesn't seem like I it was worth the read for me at this current moment given all that I have on my TBR. So I think I'm gonna part with this one as well. And I forgot that I had one hidden back here as well. I have this one, The Unlikely Pilgrim of Pilgrimage of Harold Fry. I heard that this did get some good reviews, but I did get this book a long time ago. And like I said, this is not really my genre anymore. I don't know. It's just not something I look that I feel like I'm going to be reading anytime soon. So I'm going to part with this one as well. Say hi to the birds. Say hi to the birds. Guys, we're at Crazy Bins. We've never been here before. This is cool. Danny Colgan. Okay, let me see. What's this one? Wow. This one, it's okay. It's kind of, look at it. It's me. Is it too warm? The angle of it? Oh, let me check. You know how it's leaning to one side? Oh. Or do you think it's okay? Mm. I think it's okay because I think this would be like a quick read for you if you want to donate it afterwards. Yeah, so. Right? Yeah. It's three dollars. Right? See you, Mom. Is this? For sure. So guys, if you have made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I know this was a different kind of vlog, but we thought it was fun to just kind of share what we've been up to. So thank you so much for sticking with us. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more content. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.